checks and make sure that we can hear everybody. Uh, give me a second though, because I gotta bring up my secondary shitty ass um, Google Book, Chromebook, whatever the hell they call it. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess the the question is when it says players ignore all canceled results. Does it mean just skip the rest of the attack? I think so, yeah. I think you're out of luck. I think your shenanigans are not going to work, Tommy. If you would like to appeal to a higher authority, feel free. But uh, I've got bad news for you. All right, let's do a mic check for you both. Mic check, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two. Look. Hello, one, two, three. Say hi, James. <laughs> Hello, James. That sound. That sound. Yeah, he's talking to his friends. Can you say hi? Like, say use your words. You can wave. <laughs> we can't and see you. He hides and runs away. I can see. He's embarrassed. That's. That's okay. usually how it works. Okay, so both of you are coming through loud and clear. Uh, so, okay. uh, you guys can go ahead and uh, finish setting up. I'm just going to kind of do oh, a I... brief introduction I... to what we're doing Rocks. here. Uh, so, hey everybody, welcome to the Militant Casuals Beer and Pretzels stream. Uh, beer and Pretzels because I think everybody's drinking. I don't know if everybody's eating, but you know, beer alone does not a game make. Um, what we're doing tonight is not a jank tank game. Instead, what we're going to do is we've got uh, Daniel Isophane Lim, famous X-Wing player, uh, and Tommy Ten Thumbs Nguyen, um, somewhat slightly less famous X-Wing player, uh, facing off with you know lists that they just kind of want to play, like an X-Wing Knight. And uh, what I'm here to do is sort of prompt them to answer interesting questions as we go from you know round to round and phase to phase, and make this something more like a um, like a kind of a talk out loud experience, but still try to maintain as much you know mystery and gameplay as we as we can you know not give away secrets or goals necessarily, but talk about how you think about your your moves. So. Um, I obviously I, I'm uh, one of the founders of Militant Casuals. Tommy also one of the founders of Militant Casuals. Uh, Daniel just likes to hang out with us, uh, but he's a Capital Corsair. Um, let's have each of you talk about what you're flying today, uh, and we'll start with Tommy. Uh, I'm flying a horrible jank list that uh, I came up with, I believe, on the last day of LVO while waiting for coffee at a Starbucks. <laughs> And uh, we've just determined that uh, the, the Tarani trying to munitions fail safe um, shots against Leighton does not give him any evade. So that makes me sad, but I won't be changing my list at this point. Yeah, I, I'm ashamed to admit that I was culpable in the creation of this list, which is, let's just go through it really quickly. We've got Leighton Ashira with Juke and Auto Blasters, Sarasu with Marksmanship and Auto Blasters, Trani Kolda with Snapshot, Cluster Missiles, R5TK, and Munitions Failsafe, so ultimately you're only wasting one whole point. Uh, Captain Seavor with Crackshot and a generic Mining Guild Sentry for a nice round 200 points. Um, Daniel uh, is running something a little bit more uh, his typical style. Daniel, tell us what you've got. Okay, so I am running relatively simple list. It's uh, three of the generic ARC 170s, Obi-Wan yeah, in the Aether Sprite, and Obi-Wan oh, has a Delta 7 upgrade for his configuration, and um, sense, so I can see dials during the system phase. Yeah, so three generic uh, but very beefy ARCs, uh, and a Jedi, definitely a um, an archetype that Daniel has run a lot. Uh, of course, Tommy's running Jank, and Tommy's known for Jank, uh, but... Uh, Nobody out jank store champ Tommy Ten Thumbs win anyway, so uh, should be pretty good. So which of you brought gas clouds and which of you brought rocks? I brought rocks. Okay. Because of the, the mining guild ties. Gotcha. And so that means obviously Daniel brought the gas clouds. So before we start placement, uh, what did why did you guys choose the obstacles you chose? Let's start with Daniel. Um. I chose gas clouds just because arcs are not the most uh, maneuverable ship, 
and mm-hmm. cast spells have almost no consequence for going over them. I mean, okay, my art gets minus, gets a strain and minus one agility, but I'm still sitting behind nine health, that's fine. And uh, Obi-Wan can hide uh, behind gas clouds, and along with his extra health, uh, he can take a quiet beating um, if he gets focus fire behind gas clouds. All right. And uh, Tommy, you were talking about the ability of the Mining Guild Sentry, so talk about that a little bit. Uh, just giving them a little bit more w- with their ability, they can fly through those rocks, so it opens up the board a little bit more. And, you know, if I place them correctly, maybe I can get one of those medium base ships to miss miss a round of shooting or once or twice. Yeah, and and, and just to, to build on you know what you're saying there, Tommy, it's not just that you can fly through them, you can also do an action off them if you need to, if you land yeah. on one. Um, but unlike, uh, you know, things we we see with some other ships that, like Dash, um, you can't just sit on the rock. You do have to eventually, if you want to fire, be off of it. Or not roll. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's, kind of a general question. Um, seeing the list you see across from you, and starting with Tommy, um, how are you thinking about rock setup and how are you thinking about, you know, how you're going to eventually set up your ships? Not, you don't have to be in specifics that give away, you know, your, your core, your important thinking, but, you know, just generally, you know, what are you trying to get out of rock placement? In this case, I'll probably try and cluster them in some area where I can either set up uh, the mining guild ties to flank through them or try and lure some of those arcs through one or two rocks while you know the i have the other three ships either depending on where daniel places either jousting or running away from you know three (laughs) arcs in a 7b and then you know daniel knowing that obviously that you know the the rocks are there to provide an advantage to the mining guild sentries and a disadvantage to your arcs. You know, what in general do you think about as you are pondering what to do with the uh, obstacles here? Um, so I believe I have a slightly bigger bid than Tommy. I think you're at 199. Is that right, Tommy? He's a full 200, I think. Oh, it's full 200? Okay. I'm at like 198. So uh, we do have a tie I5. Um, so I and we don't have any ties at I two. He's got three, a one, a four, and a five. So I'm thinking, you know, I want Obi Wan to move last, of course, so that I can use his, you know, his fine tune controls to dodge his I five. Um, so he'll be giving, I'll be giving him first player. So he'll grab the first rock, and Tommy most likely will grab that biggest, that big medium size, or you know, that asteroid. Yep. Put it somewhere, I'm thinking, in the middle, just to clog up lanes. So my next thought is, okay, I'm going to grab the second biggest rock and put it in the corner where it's not going to bother me. Yep. And then we're just going to go from there. And, and then he'll probably grab the other, that little tiny L with mustache-shaped yep. rock. And it, it be at, he'll probably try and, again, like you said, put it really close together and cluster it up in the middle. But it's a, it's a, it has a much smaller footprint. So I'm not too concerned about it. Um, the one thing, though, you know, just in general, if you're trying to do rocks or gas clouds or asteroids or whatever, um, usually, at least from my, I think I heard in a different podcast, you pick as many obstacles of the most similar size as possible. So if you're going to go small rocks, pick the three smallest. If you're going to go the big rocks because you've got mining guild ties and you want to you know, clog up lanes, pick the three biggest or pick the three like medium-sized ones that are all similar. That way it doesn't give your opponent, like in this situation, I'm going to take away one of the big ones and leave you with a small one most likely. And that kind of uh, goes against your uh, your strategy. So I was kind of long-winded. I totally did that on purpose so, so Daniel could, could bring that up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well done. Tommy's already playing 10D chess with his 10 thumbs here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and have you guys do rock placement, and um, why don't you kind of think out loud as you place each rock? Well, as Daniel said, right, we're going to clog up rain, uh, lane, so the biggest rock I will prob- I will end up putting... We're going left or right, right, Daniel? Yeah, uh, you take right, I'll take left. Sure.
So the arcs aren't the fastest ships. So the question is, do I want to put the rock closer, slightly closer to one side or the other? Probably. Yeah. And then, and there's a dial for you. So they've got the one and the one banks, two banks. Uh, they have a two hard turn. They do have a three hard turn, but it's red. Four forward is red. And four K is red. Okay. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll probably go there. It's mostly in the center, a little bit closer to Daniel's side of the board than mine. Okay. And like I said, I'm going to put the rock in the opposite corner. So again, my thought behind that is I'm going to put it on your side where it's most likely not going to affect me and it's just going to be there and no, hopefully I won't, won't mess up my ship or my formation. And we'll just fill in the gap. Okay, so if that rock was one of the bigger ones, we'd have a nice straight lane of rocks yeah all right gas yeah, here's there. an here's an example right so this is one of the bigger bigger rocks out there see how much, see how much more that would have uh, clogged up that lane so but because it's not the arcs can have more have more of an easier time to fly through yeah i mean i, I just want to point out the placement's actually you know it's kind of exactly where you want to have those rocks just because you know, Daniel's going to want to hold a formation probably of some sort with his arcs, and uh, it's going to be harder to bring them through in a formation with, you know, a, a big lane bisected by, you know, two lanes instead, bisected by a rock into two lanes. Right. Um, and again, I'm just going to put the gas cloud in a corner where hopefully it's not going to affect them go from there. Um, the other thing, though, uh, Ben, is I don't, I mean, yes, they want to fly in form quote unquote formation from arcs but i don't need to fly information right. um that's the thing that if you're going to bring like a beef list um you have to consider to think you know do i need to fly information or not um in this situation the only tether that my ships have to be to get you know close by is obi-wan's ability to, to regenerate focus tokens yep. um and it's a range three ability which is you know, here i guess since we're doing this let me pull obi-wan up so, so that's that's a range three from Obi Wan, right? On the, on the map right there. Yep. And I mean that's like half the board, or more than half the board. So my ships can be pretty far away from each other, still and still get the effect of Obi Wan. So as long as I'm staying in that range three bubble, that's as close or as far as I you know as I need to be to each other. So again, I can be almost on opposite sides of the map and still be in close enough, you know, quote unquote formation to, um, to, to get their ability. Yeah. Um, Actually, to, to illustrate that a little bit further, let me just do a, man, a manipulation here. If we put Obi-Wan right in the center here of the map, you can see it fills pretty much that entire central range of the board, right? Which means that as long as your arcs aren't at the very board edge uh, and, and you know, you can use that as sort of a, a guideline for where Obi-Wan can be, you know, shifting over by essentially one base, one large ship base, um, essentially covers that, that, that lane almost completely, right? You know, what I mean by that is right now, you know, if you think about it, that outside lane is not covered, but, you know, then you can think about, oh, okay, I shift Obi-Wan over a base length and all of a sudden I cover that whole half of the board, right? Or it could be the other way around, just to you know, to illustrate. Like if the arcs are engaging in here, Obi Wan can be flanking and have pretty, you know, useful control. So. And same thing. Same thing goes for sense, right? If Tarani's here, yeah. Obi Wan just needs to be one ship base past the center. Yeah. What she's doing. Yeah. Now, granted, of course, that you know, at range two and three, Obi Wan has to make a decision whether to spend force on that. Um, but yes, absolutely. Um, all right, so why don't we go ahead and move into ship setup, um, which I believe... Me first! Tommy's, uh, yeah, the mining guild sentry gets to go on first. 
And he's done. And Tommy, you've chosen to put that mining guild sentry on the uh, top edge of the board, probably because that's where the rocks are. I'm guessing. Correct. Yeah. All right. And Daniel, we go to you. Okay, I'm set. All right. All right. So yeah, I'm just um, picking the opposite corner, just kind of lining my guys up. There's a nice, you know, gap in the middle where Obi Wan may or, or may not be in the future, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> All right. So Tommy, you're looking across, you know, that edge of the board at 27 health, <laughs> and. Uh, Nine red, nine red attack dice. Yeah, yep. this is probably one of those times where I don't go barely in there. Oh, wow. Now, if I were flying a droid, a droid swarm, that would probably be straight where I would be going. But um, I have not flown scum in a while, and I definitely haven't flown uh, mining guild ties in a while. Yeah, Seavor is one of my favorite pieces. It makes me very sad that Seavor specifically is excluded from hyperspace. Uh, but just Seavor. Yeah, because he is really freaking good, particularly with Crackshot, which also is not in hyperspace, but still. Here. And Sarisu will... So as you guys are, are finishing setup, and, and this will take you, Daniel, to putting Obi-Wan down, um, a lot of uh, times you'll hear, if you listen to X-Wing podcasts or watch um, X-Wing streams, you'll hear um, players talk about uh, after rock setup um, and sort of the back and forth of you know setting up versus your opponent, um, looking at the board and thinking about you know where on the board do, do you want to engage and, and that's obviously a part of where you're putting your ships relative to the rocks it might be even part of your rock setup strategy right um not to necessarily give away you know where you want to engage here but um how much is that going to affect your your first move um where you would prefer to engage versus where you think your opponent would uh, choose to want to engage uh, let's start with you daniel um so i'm the biggest thing I'm worried about going into this is I have a my ships have a big uh, footprint. You know, they're meeting big ships. I got three of them plus Obi Wan. I I don't want to give him uh, a Tarani snapshot bullseye shenanigans, right? That's his, that's one of the big uh, sneak attacks, I guess, uh, with Thomas List. So I definitely don't want to line my guys up in a row, to have them you know shoot them down. So. I'm going to try and spread out a little bit, like I said, as long as I stay within the range three bubble of Obi-Wan, perfectly safe, and everything's good to go. Um, and I don't really want to get jammed up in, that, in those uh, uh, trio of rocks in the top right corner, so I'm going to try and avoid that and fight in the more uh, open space where my arcs can maneuver and do K-turns and take advantage of that rear arc instead of having to like wiggle between rocks. And Tommy, your thoughts? Well, I would like to pull Daniel into this nice triangle of obstacles, but that's most likely not going to happen. <laughs> no. So I, so my thoughts will be either he's going to either come down the bot, you know, he's going to take a path around it either at the bottom or through, you know, this left, this left hand, uh, this top half of the line of rocks here. Now that doesn't stop him from, you know, pushing through a couple more, uh, uh, you know, Obi Wan through the obstacles with, you know, one of the arcs as a wingman and kind of splitting his forces and, you know, 
kind of flanking with uh, a two two other arcs, as odd as odd as that would sound. But you know, him splitting up his he doesn't have to like you said he doesn't have to keep his forces together. Where you know some of my guys, some of my ships probably want to stay together, especially with Sirisu providing that extra die reroll. Yep. Okay, so let's have you guys do your dials down. And then what I want to do is, once your dials are down, both sides, I want uh, to see what you think uh, the other person's opening moves were <laughs> before we reveal. So uh, go ahead and work on your dials, and when you're ready, let me know you're set. All right, if you are wondering why there's silence on the stream at the moment, we're just waiting for uh, both t both players to get their dials down. Uh, and I'm since set. this is... Oh, go ahead. Are you good? I'm, I'm just, I'm just yeah, saying I'm set, so... Okay, so uh, let's start actually with Tommy on this one. Tommy, what do you expect to see uh, from Daniel's first moves? Run straight to victory. <laughs> All right. Uh, even the guy who's staring at a gas cloud? Uh, no. Um, I expect probably that, what is that? Uh, yeah, the arc one to probably bank up toward the top of the board, while the other two's, uh, while the other two will either, you know, probably two straight. And Obi-Wan, I, I don't know how fast Obi-Wan is going. So um, you'll see that my moves are kind of conservative. All right. Daniel, what are you expecting to see now that Tommy has spoiled his moves? A little, yeah. Um, <laughs> Tarani, one bank. Uh, Sarasu, do they have a one bank or a two bank on their dial? I think it's, they have a one bank, right? They definitely have one hards. They have a one bank. They have a one bank as well. Yeah, I expect Sarasu to stay behind Tarani. Just, um, so, like, one bank and one bank over there. Three, uh, uh, like, the Tough Fighters and uh, Leighton probably just doing, like, a two forward. Um, I don't expect him to hard one turn down toward the board edge. I just I think he's just gonna do like a two forward or three, yeah, like a two forward um, on those top three ships. All right. Uh, so let's uh, see what happens. All right, mining guild sentry. Off he goes. Yep. Oop. Oh, four forward. And then we will. Very conservative. <laughs> You lie to me. <laughs> this is correct. It's a TIE fighter. It, everything it does is conservative. Um, I'll probably... I, you know, there's a debate on whether I should... If I want to barrel roll or not, but... I probably do not, because the only I mean, option is the barrel roll up, and that's no... Yeah, that's no I mean, you know, only you know what Leighton and, and Sivor are actually doing, so you've got to obviously keep that in mind as you decide if you're going to reposition here. So, arcs away. So, hard two over there. Yep. Barrel backwards, just keep, just basically keep uh, slow speed. Yep.
no one forwards for for Daniel. I got oh, one. He got oh, one. Oh, there's one. All right, and you and you will win because that is the one forward to victory. So, sorry, Tommy. Only just the one. It's okay. That that means I have a fifty percent chance of winning. I folks, I don't. <laughs> well, if it's one of his four <laughs> dials, technically, I think that gives you a. a 75% chance of winning. Did you guess on Obi-Wan or not? I don't think you did. No, I, 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 I'm I, thinking he goes like a four straight. I think he's going to do a one hard. Yeah. All right, so who's next? Uh, we will do Seaborg. And I... Oh, good. Stop that. Go back. Tommy is ten thumbsing it up already. I am, so I'm going to attempt a barrel roll. Because why not? And he has one good option. All right, Leighton. And he's going to barrel roll back toward the board edge, which is this side. And it looks good. We're done. So Tarani. One bank. Like Daniel expected. And we will go ahead and lock Leighton. Or possible future shenanigans. And Sarisu will do a one bank as well. And she'll just take a focus. All right, so everyone says, ooh. Oh, that fit, look at that. I did a one bank. Um, so, hmm. obviously, I'm going to try and reposition. So I'm going to stand behind that. So I'm in in my mind. I'm seeing Tommy is not committing, but he's um, directing more of his forces to the bottom right corner of the board, or you know, in that general direction. So I'm going to go the opposite way. So I have a, I have a question for you, Daniel. So that is as close as you could get to that arc without bumping. Um. Literally. So is that a, you know, the formation you opened in, one that you have used many times and you know exactly how that one bank fits alongside that arc or just... Nope, that was just luck. Just dumb luck. Tommy, do you believe that? I don't believe that at all. I think he's being modest, but, you know, dumb luck ain't, ma ain't bad to have either. <laughs> I mean, if it was like a real tournament, I would I would practice this. Like, I I generally know I what I want to do. I want to have my three arcs kind of lined up. I put my orange arc. I think they're all, they're almost all parallel. I think one of them was like slightly further back than the yes. other, just because yeah. I just quickly dragged it over. Yeah. Um, but I knew he was going to try and hard turn and barrel roll back anyways, so it didn't it, it wouldn't really matter because a hard turn on the medium base plus a barrel roll back, I think. It will fit no matter what i think I, I may be slightly wrong on that don't quote me um <laughs> but and then i just knew that i want to go relatively slow with the teal and red the two other arcs yeah. and i know usually that if an arc goes one forward a ship behind it can one bank because of the medium base moves forward more than you think right but and again also, like it was closer also, than i would like yeah, I was just gonna say, and also, of course, that arc that you you know did the one bank behind was up against the the range one band, and then the you know Obi Wan was starting from the back, so you've got a little bit more space there too, besides just the one forward template. Uh, so I think we've reached end phase, so everybody should regen and drop your tokens. Um, I see you have gone ahead and target locked uh, Leighton, despite us telling you that this shit's not going to work. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> um, and so we head towards um, the second round here. We're back to dials. 
Uh, so I'll let you guys get your dials down, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, what you're thinking. You know, each player is going to do as you, you know after you've set your dials and they're locked. Daniel is playing against type tonight because he's getting his dials down very quickly. But of course, you know, we're probably another turn from real engagement, so that probably helps explain some of that. Uh, Tommy's yeah. think, thinking pretty hard, so... Well, he, he does have one more ship than me, so I'll, I'll, I'll give him that. It's just taking me way too long to set five dials. Plus, I keep rotating them to make sure my lefts and rights are right. Mm. Because... Pro tip. Tommy because Tommy Ten Thumbs is <laughs> bad at left, lefts and rights. <laughs> I, almost, I was playing a, a game today against Rick, and I almost put the wrong... Um, I was coming from the top of the board and almost put the wrong bank in to go go through gas clouds right into the teeth of his ships, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I should probably rotate these dials. Anyway, uh, dials are down, uh, so let's go with... Uh, Daniel, what do you expect to see from Tommy this turn? Um... Tarani and Sarasu just kind of um, keep going forward because they have a nice clear path between that uh, big rock and that darker color gas cloud. So I'm assuming he wants the game engagement to happen there where he can position his snapshot right in between those two uh, obstacles. Uh, Layton is going to somehow try and get up front, um, try and maybe do a bank maneuver, but he wants Layton up in front so he can use Tarani to trigger Layton. Um, he might consider slow rolling Tarani and, you know, do like a one forward and barrel back and have Sarasu bump into the back of Tarani just to slow down to give uh, Layton some time to catch up. But I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Tommy wants to, you know, or how far ahead Tommy planned for that. But the Thai fighters in the top left are just going to come, you know, five uh, barreling down. So I'm assuming three banks on both on them or like a fast forward mover. Yeah. And in, in that vein, I just want to point out that, you know, Layton could do a five forward and hope to get in front probably next turn pretty easily, as long as the other two slow roll. Um, so Tommy, what do you expect to see from the arcs and Obi-Wan? I expect, uh, you know, the, what is that? Orange, the orange arc to probably do, do a one or a two bank to clear its stress. Um, the teal arc probably, I would, uh, something either a one or a two straight, possibly a two bank. I'm not sure if it clips that gas cloud or not. And, uh, the, uh, the red arc is probably going to do a three bank or a two bank up toward the rest of my list. Uh, Obi-Wan, I'm just not even attempting to figure out where Obi-Wan's going to be. Normally, I, I would bring uh, uh, debris because Jedi and their fine-tuned uh, controls are a pain in the butt, but in this case, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, I'm going to bet Obi-Wan does a two-forward barrel roll back just to move as slow as he can. That's my bet. It's also really disheartening hearing uh, Daniel call out my moves be be before they're done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's, oh, let's, let's see what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens. All right. First TIE Fighter. Let's take a focus. So the other thing I want to do, um, point out is, I know that he, he, you do have a jam um, with Seaborn. Um, but just in like a general like practice or general um, like good habits to make, if you see your opponent have jam abilities, 
you want to spend your first couple turns target locking just yeah. random stuff. Because then I mean, if the enemy jams, well, you have a chance yeah. of saying, oh, hey, you took my target lock on that asteroid. Cool. All right. Now I focus. Instead of you get stuck with yeah. the jam token and then you have to fizzle your focus token at a later point. Yeah. Um, but Seavor's timing is different that he because it happens during engagement, uh, not yeah. during the ac uh, activation step. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter in this situation. But just like one of those um, training points, I guess. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, Seavor, Seavor is a very special case because he gets that jam in a, at a much larger distance and just because he gets either you know attacked or gets to attack which is what makes Seavor so good um so i think you predicted that one bank right tommy yep yeah um so the other thing i wanted in this situation uh, see how our my his i1 and my i2 are kind of facing you know basically head to head um, this is where your eyeballing or your like rule of eleven comes in. Um, it's kind of hard to do rule of eleven because we're at an angle, but you can try and eyeball it um, to decide what action to do for your for the arc. Um, if Tommy wants to go for a really fast bump because he has ships behind it, so take advantage of you know moving first and getting the bump on my on my um, on my arc. I need to decide if a five four from that mining guild tie will block a 1-4 on my arc. And this is where I need to decide it now. Um, if that makes, you know, so... Yeah. I think I'll be clear, because do you even have a 5-4 or is it just a 4 forward? It's a five, it's, it's red. Five okay, forward. so that, if, in, if it was like a regular, like Imperial TIE Fighter, I would have to more, be more concerned about it, but this situation, I'm okay where I am, so I'm just going to focus. Yeah. Something else to keep in mind about the Mining Guild ties. Uh, if you, if you haven't flown against them, they not only is their five forward red, but they also lose the four K. Correct. They just have the three K. So here I went over the gas cloud. I'll take a strain, no big deal. And like, like I said in the beginning, gas clouds have no, almost no uh, problem because we're not shooting this round, so. Big whoop, I, I get a string, I'm, I'm going to do a blue move next turn most likely, just to just keep taking my time and not getting hit by uh, that Tarani uh, snapshot. So taking a string early is, is not that big of a deal. I'm going to attempt a barrel to the right. And this is um, just kind of fanning out my arcs to give the most arc uh, range, you know, arc coverage, um, and to minimize snapshot and Tarani's bullseye potential. So I'm not lining up in a row. I'm spreading out horizontally to meet uh, Tarani. And just to point out, not coincidentally, also taking uh, good advantage of this secondary um, lane here created by the two gas clouds in the corner. Um, you know, and, and putting pressure on Tommy to think about, oh God, which of these lanes do I commit to down the road? Yep. Can I draw on this? Hold on one second. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's that, there's that one. So there's that lane there. Yep. There's now this other lane I've created here. And then now obviously there's this lane that we have this little uh, mini joust happening here. So if you fly, if you fly your ships in a block, like, let's say I flew all my ships in this one little corner here. Let, let, let's say I did them all in this little, like, section in the bottom right. And I just kind of went all, like, one forward to victory and just stayed in the nice little bump. And Tommy can then just barrel in one sector Collapse and... On yep. Yeah, exactly. But now he has to choose. And he has to either split focus fire onto one arc and the other two are safe. Or he'll have to fight one on one, in which case I don't mind going one on one with the Tie Fighter versus an Arc, because an Arc's going to win in that in that yeah. fight. Yeah. Let me ask a question of each of you, um, or here I'm going to ask you a question, um, and then I want you to type your answer into the chat, but don't hit enter until I say so. Um, if you guys had jousted, who's wrong? So type your answer into the chat, but don't hit enter until each of you has got your answer in chat. In this game, if each of you had jousted, who was wrong? Just a pure just numbers joust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because you you know you're not headed exactly towards a joust now, but you know each of you has to think about like as as you look at these lanes and as you think about your next moves, you're going to have to think about is there um, part of each of my opponent's list that I want to focus on, right? Um, and that's going to inform your next set of moves, right? Where where you're going to commit to, um, and that's not a dissimilar decision than when you have to think about just you know joust me, bro, right? Um, because you know you're making concessions to part of the your opponent's list if they don't do exactly what you think they're going to do and, and kind of end up in a secondary joust in, in a sense. Um, so do you guys have your answers in chat? Yep. yep. All right, hit enter. Ah, okay. So <laughs> that's kind uh, of okay. kind of perfect. Um, you each think that you would have been wrong to do a pure joust. And I actually, I lean towards um, Daniel, you being wrong myself, um, not just for the defensive reroll, but in a joust that makes Tarani much more powerful as well. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, proceed. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just, you know, that's the thing that gets talked about a lot is, you know, when you when you size up your opponent's list and, and you're deciding whether to joust or not. Um, we've, I think each of us has seen our opponents make the wrong call <laughs> on that, right? Um, there is the five forward, yeah. Yep. That, that, uh, in, in the pure joust, also, roll. it's a lot... Yeah, sorry, but... Uh, Good. Nope. Nice barrel um, roll. I was going to say, uh, in, the, in the pure joust, uh, he also has the initiative, initiative advantage in a way, because he has both the lower and the higher end, so it's easier for him to get the block of I one and it is a lot harder for me to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, and then after he, if he blocks my formation, and again, arcs are clunky and big, yeah. fat, uh, it's easier for him to initiative kill with his higher initiative ships. And also, once you're in that pileup, it's much easier for him with more ships and probably a deeper formation to keep your arcs even from getting out of the, the blocks, right? Uh, exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's hard for me to, like, K-turn or do stuff behind him. Yeah. Yep, so here I go, committing to uh, a lane. Well... Mm -hmm. You know what would help? A damage deck. No, it's fine, because you're just not going to get damaged, so you're just going to win, right? Obviously. Yeah. Right. When, when, my green dice, uh, when my green dice fail me, I'll just uh, proceed to throw the game. All right, so Obi-Wan just one banked. Yep, just one bank, and I'm debating on the action. I think he's fine the way he is. I'm just going to focus. Okay, in the round, uh, check, or not in the round, combat phase, engagement phase. You can check uh, range if you want. Nothing for Obi-Wan. Nothing for Karate, so I doubt anyone else has anything either. Yep, no ships in range. Let's see how close we are here. Mm, not, too bad, not too bad. Yeah. So I'm I'm purposely checking everything because I don't know where range two is. So that can help me plan my next move to determine whether I get snapshotted or not. And so you can see from Tarani's arc that, you know, the range two, regardless of how far forward I move next turn, is going to cover a nice portion of uh, what's in front of that uh, teal arc. Mm -hmm. And then um, in, in this planning phase, the other thing I do want to consider is Tarani has a nice, juicy bullseye on the teal arc. And I need to decide if I want to do anything about it or not. And that's 
during my, you know, in the, in the next few minutes or so. But uh, anyways, end of round? Yeah, the, the advantage to the kind of end of phase, or not end phase, but the engagement phase measurement here for you, Daniel, is you, you can very clearly see that a one forward is not going to put you at range two since you move first. Um, but yeah, as you say, like, are you going to end up barrel rolling so that you don't end up pegged on the attack? Right. And the other thing is, do I even care? Right. Right. Um, sure, my, my nine health arc will take one damage. Because I can't spend the foot. Fo I'll, I'll focus as my action, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't spend it on defense because of the dead to rights ability. Um, I could spend it on the defense for uh, Layton or uh, Sarasu if, if, they, if they take a shot. But again, like, do I, do I really care? I mean, my, I'm taking a focus for damage, to do damage, not to avoid damage. Yeah. yeah with, with one green die, why, why spend the focus? All right, so we're off to round three dials. Um, when everyone's dials are down, we'll do what we did last time, and we'll see what Tommy thinks uh, he's going to get out of Daniel's moves, and then vice versa. I also have thoughts. I know what I would do in Daniel's position. That makes one of us. <laughs> well... The, the real question is going to be whether uh, I'm right or not. Or if Daniel is as um, committed as I am to certain principles, let's call them. All right, I'm set whenever. I just got this last out to go. Damn it, Tommy. Now I'm going to think even slower. <laughs> Our one viewer is very upset. Just the one. Yeah. We had two, but the other person, I think, fell asleep. So. Yeah. They saw what I was flying, decided the outcome was already done. <laughs> All right, I'm set. Okay, so Tommy, okay. let's start with you. What do you expect Daniel to do here? I expect those two uh, Obi Wan and that top arc. Well, the top arc will do a one or a two forward because I don't think. Because even if I go, even if uh, I go fast, I don't think I get to block him. Uh, Obi Wan will probably come up behind and either use fine tune to barrel roll up into the left to come around the top and flank my guys from kind of that uh, from ship right at this point. And I expect uh, the bottom two arcs to just go straight or, you know, possibly bank, but nothing to their, their blues kind of limit them to what they're going to do. So I'm just going to Commit to my lanes and hope I guess right. Yeah. All right. So Daniel, what are you expecting from Tommy? The building's finally done. Um, All the tracks have so done. from Good top to job. bottom, I won. Uh, Tie fire four forward, Steve Warrior four forward. Uh, possibly hitting that rock, but he doesn't care because he's it's a rock. 
Yep. Uh, as you can see, we're in the mix of things. Tarani one forward, uh, Sasu two forward, staying right behind Tarani. Layton doing a three bank in. Yep. All right, so here's what I th would do as Daniel. So two bank, two forward, two bank, two hard, and get Tarani off the board. So let's see what you all did. All right. Here comes the mining guild sentry. Boop, bumps. Oh, okay. Didn't want that fight. Sweet. Hoping that would clear, but oh well. Let's just have an expect. All right, arcs. All right, let's do this. So. Too bang. <laughs> so I did that. So you were close. I did a one four instead of a two. Yeah, it was. I was. You know, I was kind of. You know, for me, I, I wanted to get as many uh, and as many dice as possible on to Tarani. So I put would have done a two forward, but without really thinking about the potential consequences, <laughs> which I'm sure you did think about. <laughs> Yeah, I the thing is, um, so again, it can't. It's really hard to draw like non-straight lines, but yeah. So I, I'm thinking. Imagine that as more of like a, a curve line. Hmm. So when Tarani moves a one forward, all of them will be almost equidistant away from Tarani. I was worried if if I did a two forward, that might be within like range one or depending on how fast Tarani moved. Um, or ideally, if he moves one forward, everyone's at range three. There's no like one clear target. Right. Um, so that's why I'm trying to like this little like try to do like a concave uh, right. circle or whatever. So your thinking, Daniel, was that you were a little bit concerned that you might lo get initiative killed if you were too aggressive with the middle arc. Yeah, and then the other thing is, um, remember we saw the range two right here. Yeah. Can we can we turn it on just? Sure. Go for it. So another yeah another one forward it'll put me close to that bulls to that. Mm, um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I want to say that's the two forward length, so it was close, and I didn't really want to risk it. So yeah. I would just because also you see how like the at range three how they're all almost equidistant away range wise. Yep. So that, that was my goal: to keep them as um, nice. some much distance to each other as possible. All right, Tommy, what did you do? Let's see. Nice. Goes that way, and he will barrel roll off the rock to the ship right. Titan. We'll take the evade. The evade's not beautiful. What do they have? Layton has Juke. Yeah, Layton has Juke and Auto Blasters. Auto Blasters. Okay, yeah. so that's going to be a Juke shot. That's fine. And also with Auto Blasters, if you actually don't have Arc on uh, Layton, then he can push any crits basically right through. They can't be evaded. Yeah. So here's that abstract number I was talking about. So once we show the, the Arcs, if I had done the 2 forward, I want to say that's a range 1 shot. Yeah, I think you're right. So at this point, the question is, you like that? Oh, you know what? I don't really care at this point. I'm part of me is just playing this list to figure out to mess around. So we'll do that. Okay. So and yeah. So yeah, um, if I had done a two forward, he would be at range one, and he would be like a nice, obvious, juicy target. And I didn't, I didn't really want that to happen. Gotcha. So Tommy, it looks like you expected the arcs to stay split up on this this round. Kinda, and I kind of just wanted to split up, split up and cover most of those lanes, um, just in case. Um, if I were thinking properly, I probably would have tried to protect Tarani a little bit more, but in this case, I'm not. I'm just gonna roll dice and see how it goes. Uh, yep. Let's see what I want to do here. 
to check uh, for lock with Sarisu. And that's that. And there's the two hard. Spend the force to boost. No, nah, no need. Hard to nah. range three. Yeah, he's. Yeah. I think, you know. So, I, I, Dan, you, uh, I'll tell you why. Kind of, uh, I predicted your moves, uh, or would have done the same thing. So, uh, to me, there's nothing in that list that Dan, that Tom is running. Tommy's running that is nearly as dangerous as Tarani. And, you know, I looked at the board and saw that, you know, Tronny was probably going to do a one forward, but that one forward was going to put him just past the rock. And so gave an opportunity to converge and focus fire. Um, and, you know, yes, you, uh, you, you get shot by a Seavor and maybe crack shot it, etc. But, you know, I'm not really afraid of those two die attacks relative to the importance of getting Tronny off the board. You know, what was kind of your thought process? Yeah, so the one thing I think Tommy could have done slightly differently in the last turn, uh, he did a two forward with Tarani, I believe. Is that correct? Yep. Previous yep. turn. And that puts you a little bit too far out um, because Tarani was another like one movement template back. It is very possible that he will have rock coverage from the two flanking arcs. Um, and that would give him more, you know, more defense. But because he did the two forward, and that made it so that at, at even like a, his slowest speed of one forward would put his front just again slightly past the rocks, and have that gave me clear shots on Tarani. If he had done the slower move previous turns, I would have been more hesitant to do all in on this on Tarani here, yeah. um, because it'll be it would also be harder for Obi Wan to get a shot at range three. Yeah. Um, if he had done a slow move last turn, because uh, Obi Wan was a little bit, because like, like you know we saw the the range right. Yep. Uh, here, so if Tori had done the, was one more ship length or movement speed back, have had to spend a force to boost, and then uh, you know he would be in arc of Seavor. Yep. I I, I want to say Tommy, I really liked Seavor's move over the rock. I think that was um, very well well conceived and played here um you know the barrel roll is fine here because you you know you know that there's no way that the arc wastes a shot on Seavor when he wants to get Tarani off the board so you just kind of like taunting him so so let's see what combat does all right yep so uh, sirisu raise three shot through the cloud is what we determined Uh, yep. So three for me. Hey. Uh, yes, Cloud. <laughs> womp womp. Uh, Obi Wan. Range three. While you guys finish up combat in this round, I'm going to go get another beer. Ugh. Okay, I'll send two fours for that. We said that was range three, so two dice for Tarani. Yep. Uh, one reroll for Sarisu. And as you can see, folks, <laughs> my green dice has failed me. Uh, down two shields. Heroic! Tarani right. is up next. Oh, did I just nudge her? So range two to both arcs, so we're going to fire a cluster missile into... IBP three, so the teal one, so mm -hmm. three versus one, and no focus for you. Yay! Doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to spend. Oh, when does her thing kick in? After you perform an attack on an enemy ship, unless it removes a green token. Okay, so we will uh, re-roll two, spending lock. 
Oh, god damn it. Hold on. Let's redo that. I'm going to add a focus. Change this to a blank. Reroll those attack dice. Oh, did it not get the other one? No, it did. So, two hits. So, two damage because of your ability trigger? Um, yeah, unless you remove a green token. I cannot, is that right? Because of your ability? Uh, uh, no, ability says you take a damage or remove, uh, or remove a green token. Ah, I see. So you could, re so you could remove the focus token to keep that. Uh, Can Obi Wan fix that? All right, I've returned. What I miss? What I miss? After a friendly ship spends a focus, I'm not spending. I'm removing. So no, I can't. So nope. I'll take a damage. It's fine. Uh, Obi Wan did two hits into Tarani. Uh, it rolled blank, blank. Rerolled into a blank naturally. Uh, Tarani did two hits into Teal. I got my Nighty Evade, of course, <laughs> and I took one damage for the shield, and then another one more damage from uh, Tarani's ability yeah. to uh, put the damage. All right, uh, cluster missiles. So we're gonna shoot. Uh, well, first we'll check. Uh, that's range check says that's. Uh, yep, range, range one. one. Yep. So into number two. Three dice, no mods. One hit. Average roll. Uh, one shield. And, uh, and then one more I shield. Think, uh, number three takes another one. Yep. Yeah, one more shield. So he's down to uh, six hole. All right. Uh, we'll do Layton. Inch two auto blaster shot into IBB2. So two dice. Uh, hold on. Are you in my bullseye? Is that how auto blasters work? Yeah, if you have bullseye, you get one more dice. Yeah. Yep. yep, you got it. Three dice. Uh, just a crit. Um, I'm not in your arc, right? So, uh, yeah, cool. Which is yeah. all a crit. One goes through. And then uh, Steve Orr is going to activate his charge. We put the charge next to him. Okay, uh, who are you shooting? Uh, and he's going to jam uh, number three. Uh, should have spent the focus. Did not think about that. And Steve Orr so, is so good. Uh, range. Yes. In, in hindsight, I should number have one damage earlier, but. Eh, it happens. Yeah, rolls three. Two hits. And here's where Tarani gets lit up. Hopefully. All right, so three arcs into Tarani. We'll go top to bottom, so we'll go yellow, and then teal, and then red. Would you want to go uh, yellow, red, then teal? All right, two? Um, it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, uh, yellow. Roll in one. Takes one. Okay, <laughs> next one, teal. No mods. Just the one. Roll in one. Uh, Reroll. Still a focus. Takes another one. And then red. Ooh. Add to it. Don't need any focus tokens this round. Uh, roll one. Reroll one. Damn you, Sarasu. 
One. Two. So down. Two hole left. Okay. Um that's it, right? Mining guild in the top has nothing, I'm assuming. Way too far out. So damage trade there looks like it was essentially five off of Tarani for five off of three and one off of two. Does that look right? Two off of two. All right. Two off of two. Yeah, two off of two. Hmm. So it looks like, you know, Tommy, you came out ahead, Matt, you know, at least in the engagement from and... a pure damage perspective, but yeah. a lot of hole left, a lot of, a lot of ship left. Yeah. And, you know, not necessarily dealing damage to Daniel's most dangerous piece. Correct. All right, so what do we hit? Re round four now? Round four. All right, round yep. four dials. So my, my littlest one, Aiden, has uh, joined me because someone refuses to go to sleep. Oh, and no. mommy is tired, so he will be with me. Uh, so <laughs> just a heads up on that. It's all good. He is uh, pushing buttons and pulling cords and... Um, just being a eleven month old. Oh, so he—he's just being me, but in much, in a much smaller form. <laughs> well, he has an excuse to do that. You don't. Uh, correct. I do not. But you know what? No, oh, I guess Leighton doesn't get to keep that. Daniel has dials down. And uh, one of the things I wanted to kind of point out before we get to activation here is that, you know, the aggressive turn in here does, you know, given the arc style, make things a little bit more, let's call it tricky uh, here. Right. So, you know, turned out you were jousting all along. Except for, um, <laughs> except for the mining guild sentry who did not get the memo. No. <laughs> the mining guild yeah. sentry is like, dur dur, I'm coming, boys, dur dur. <laughs> Right. Um, the other thing, though, is... You'll be the one uh, to solo Daniel's list. It'll be fine. <laughs> there you go. What I was trying to say is, um, the other thing is, I was, uh, in terms of damage potential, like, yes, uh, Tommy did do more overall uh, damage to my list, but mm -hmm. all my damage went into one ship, whereas he spread yep. his damage between two ships. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he ended up... You each ended up with half points on a ship, and obviously for Tommy, that's a, a, a more... Um, disappointing result because Tarani is 20 points more expensive than any of those arcs. And I deserved it because I flew her Bradley. <laughs> you were aggressive. You went too fast two turns ago. And that, you know, that honestly, you know, we'll come back to this discussion, but, um, you know, one of the things that separates 
um, consistently very good players. And I'm not saying, Tommy, that you're not a very good player here at all. No, no, That's we, not what I'm saying. We, we can really say that Tommy is not a consistently really good player. Um, is that, <laughs> uh, you know, the really good players aren't just planning their dials for this turn. They're planning their dials for two turns from now, right? Um, you know, when you think about, okay, how fast can I go this turn with a given ship? It's not just you know, about your attack arc and attack range this turn, you're, you know, a lot of the great players are really thinking, you know, where do I want to be in two turns? Where do I, and again, it gets, goes back to that other question, like, where do I want to engage? Right. Um, anyway, I'm going to shut up now and let's have Daniel talk about how difficult his decisions were in thinking about where Tommy's ships could be. Go ahead, Daniel. Um, so my plan is to hopefully try and bump to Ronnie. And then use Obi Wan to initiative kill Tarani before Tarani can do more of that the bullseye shenanigans. But we'll see how that goes. Um, Sarasu is probably just doing a one hard into between the best to just to support Tarani a little more. Um, Sivor is also probably doing a hard one turn just to muck things up. Uh, Mining Ghost Sentry up there is, I think, doing a bank move to come between that small rock and that medium rock. Uh, and who's last? Layton. Layton might do a. Oh, hold on. Uh, Layton might try to do a bank move to cut off red and to get a shot on red, but then that might put Layton really close to that gas cloud. I think that's going to go over the gas cloud if he does like a two bank. So he might have done a straight move and then barrel in. We'll see. I'm not sure what Layton did. Yeah. Lincoln could also, could also do a hard one up to the, his ship right, and that should clear as well, and that maybe get him a shot onto Teal if Teal you know, moves forward. Yeah. So I'll tell you that Tarani is doing a 4K. I'm just going to guess that right out. But uh, D uh, Tommy, what were you thinking about as you set your dials here? Is there any way I can get Tarani out of this round? And the answer <laughs> to that is no. <laughs> So the so the, the the next decision was, do I 4K, or do I try and minimize how many shots Tarani uh, takes? Right. And in this case, I did neither of those. Oh, damn it, Tommy! You made me a liar. Right, and and I, I wasn't too concerned about the 4K again because I have you know arcs have a rear shot. Yeah, rear arcs. Yep. Yeah. And Tarani yeah, only can, has that one can, green die. So yeah, Tarani was dying, and what I should have remembered was uh, Obi Wan will just initiative kill her. But right, which is why I was thinking about the 4K yeah. myself. Is like yeah. there's a Tarani small chance that Obi Wan can't do anything about yeah. that, particularly if you place Sivor and some other folks in particular places. But yep, but and for the one person watching the stream it, I, i'm also <laughs> playing scum for the first time in a very long time so i'm more of dinking around and trying to remember what these ships do than planning two or three turns in advance i'm more of what does this do again all oh, right this might be cool all right so let's see what happened all right mining guild sentry does exactly what daniel says Yep. And he's right there. He'll just take a focus. Arcs, do your thing. One forward to victory. Yep. All right. So now that's range. One. No snapshot. Stop it. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> look, look, look. There's a part of you in range two. Firing. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it up. One forward. Oh, sorry. Uh, they're oh. In focus. Sorry. Jesus. Stop that. You tommied that up. Right. Too many thumbs. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. And then, uh, oh, uh, was this orange? Yellow? Whatever his, name, his color yeah. is. Did you too hard orange? to the left? No. Hmm, too hard to the right. Stays where he is. Yep. Eh. yep. I wanted to try and mm. keep him where he is so that after Seifer moves... He can still stay in the fight. If I too hard, to, I thought about too hard to the left to have, to give access to the rear arc. Yeah. But again, you mentioned like the next three turns or two yeah. turns are going to be bad because then after four K, 
and two forward, and then next turn I can shoot. Yeah. So doing this, I, I stay where I am, and then that hopefully clears his two hard. <laughs> next turn, if, if uh, Seavor Seavor moves. All right, so Seavor is going to 3k. Nice. That was another reason why the 4k probably wouldn't have fit. Oh, it definitely wouldn't fit with Seavor there, for sure. And what I should have done, and what I thought about doing, I should have done, but I did not, so... And here comes a 2, uh, and unfortunately... Ah! Nobody's in arc, so Leighton will just take a... Lock on. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, number three. Yeah, look at the board state now. There's probably a space even for like a three bank to Obi Wan if that had been. Yeah. You know. Well, I was thinking a a hard turn to the right, but instead. I just went straight it. Which, folks, is not mm -hmm. the right move. Bum, bum, bum. Ah, Sarasu's reroll is going to save you. It's fine. It's right, fine. Sarasu's Sirius, just going to take a focus. Actually, what is Sarasu going to do? Sarasu's going to auto blaster the shit out of somebody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's just going to take focus. Even though I'm really tempted to take the lock on uh, IB uh, Arc 3 to have a target lock with possibly four dice. And as I say that, that's really tempting, but I'm not going to do that. First <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Recover your force, right, Daniel? You should have three. Well, I spent two last time, so I'm at. Two, I'm, I was down to one. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, you it's a range two. -er. It is range two, so you do get a snapshot Ooh. on Obi Flan. <laughs> All right, here comes two. We're fine. However, uh, now I need to decide on teal. Does teal count as in arc? If he's touching? Uh, yes. Judge? I'm uh, pretty let, sure it does. let me check. Um, yeah, I mean, you are you are in arc because otherwise ships wouldn't be able to you know, do those rules where they can attack at range zero. Ah. Um, so it says, after you perform an attack, each enemy ship in your bullseye suffers one. It doesn't say range, so it's if it says that it's usually zero to three. Yeah. yeah. So So I have an option of I can remove that focus token. And then I will take what? One shot from Sarasu. Maybe a shot from Sevor. We'll see how what you want to do. But Seabor, if you're going to shoot me, we're just going to jam it anyway. So, yeah, I'll take that focus and or I'll, I'll remove the focus and take no damage. All right. And this is where your um, eyeball and my eyeball and skills is going to keep it <laughs> Little dude, you're tired. You should just go to sleep. Uh, he's, <laughs> he is going to fuss and fuss and fuss until he falls asleep in my arms. Then I'll bring him in. Is. No. Otherwise, mommy's going to be upset. So, anyways, I need to decide if Seavor has Bullseye on Obi Wan or not. Because if you have Bullseye, I'm going to be upset. But unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think I can reposition anywhere or fine tune, so I'm kind of stuck where I am. Um, so, I'm just going to have uh, to wing it and see what happens. So, I'm just going to take a target lock on Tarani and put it up. Okay. Uh, for range? Yep. So a ship yep. is in an arc if any part of its base is inside that area. Okay. So part of the base is not touching you, and is inside the arc. So, yes. Uh, do you want to check to see if Tarani had bullseye on red? I don't. 
I don't think it is, but you want to double check? Um, uh, sure. I don't think so either. It's way, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, just double check. All right, so Sarisu has a range one shot on BP3 and BP2. Oh, I really should. Eh. You get okay, the extra so. die if you fire. Yeah, so I'll get. Eyes, so. so it's four die against. Uh, 4v1. Yeah, 4v1 or 3v1. And possibly. Oh, plus. You know what? No, we're going to go to three. And Leighton should have locked uh, two. But we're going to. You can roll it. It's go... fine. Yes. So we're going to roll four into. Arc number three. Were you hoping to crit dig? Like re-roll just to try to get crits? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter because you're in his arc, so it won't auto go through. Yes, but mark, uh, marksmanship will add another. Ah, fair. Look at that. Look at that. And then uh, marksmanship lets me turn one of these hits into a crit. Uh, hey, crit. Panic? That seems appropriate. I'd be pretty <laughs> panicked at this point. <laughs> it's not looking good for him. Okay, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, yep. Uh, range two. Okay. And this is where I need to decide how much I care about what you want in this life. Spend the, f spend the lock. Spend yeah, the for, lock me, is for, for me, this situation like this is just an auto reroll. Um... Spend the, the lock, save, save the save the focus just in case Sevor has Obi Wan in, in his uh, bullseye. Ooh, that is close. Do I get to check for bullseye arc before I commit to an attack? Yeah, you check everything yeah, yeah. first. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna act, you're gonna engage, and then when you engage, you get to measure range to all potential targets so that you know you obviously can also choose your check your bullseye arc. Uh, my baby is uh, crying very much right now so I'll be right back. But I'm gonna spend I'm gonna spend double force. I just guarantee a kill. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna roll one die. And if that wasn't evade I would have re rolled it to bleed more damage cards. But three cards into Tarani, no crits. Tarani is officially dead. Uno, dos. <laughs> so yes, if I had flown her a little bit slower on bo on both uh, on turns two and three, she would probably be alive now. Damn it, Tommy. You knew after my last game I was due for a very bad game. <laughs> like I said, uh, so, you know, uh, as Tommy talked about at the top of our little stream here, um, we, having both basically gotten wrecked in LVO, kind of were just, you know, toying around with scum lists and, and extended, uh, and uh, both kind of looking at just scum stuff and uh i think that we both managed to put together lists that are pretty bad uh yours is better than mine just because it has tarani and snapshot but uh but know, that's I, about it i think Seavor is a really good piece and i think that you know i actually do think that um sarasu is great in the right setup but um the m3a's the the named m3a's aside from that are not not good not good not good okay i'm back so Hello. uh See if we got three hits. See if we got yep. three hits. Okay, uh, bullseye or no bullseye? 
Wait, no. Oh, C4 hasn't rolled damage. Sorry, yet. not sorry. No, no, no. Um, that was your. No, uh, we haven't done anything yet. Stuff. Yeah, we haven't oh, done anything. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so all right, he cool. checked bullseye uh, and does not have it. Yeah. Okay. So. He's got no force, though. So. You've got other arcs on the arc, right? So. Yeah, I've got one, one more arc on the arc. So, I have to take this chance to try and get damage into Obi Wan. Um, and in this case, I won't be jamming him because there's nothing to do. So roll in three naked dice. And sad seaboard. It's like my naked dice today. All right, Ark, do your thing. Okay. So this is everything is um, that we can um, talk about is like targeted prep, like which arc to activate first. So I'm looking through my arcs and all three of them have shots uh, on two ships each. Or actually, Teal has the most options because Teal can shoot C4 in the back. So because Teal has the most options, I'm going to save him for last. So anyways, um, I'll start with Red. And do you uh, start with Red one. because he's got the focus token as well? Yeah, he has a focus token. He's going to put more damage through and potentially strip shields and go into like a crit, potentially. Um, like I said, uh, Yellow has the worst shots, and Yellow's most likely not going to matter. But Teal, let's say I you know, get the Miracle shot and kill Sirius with one hit, and then Yellow kills... The mining guild one hit, then Teal can shoot Captain C4 in the back or something crazy like that. But uh, anyways, let me do red first into Sarasu. Oof. Uh, spend the focus for three hits. For three. All right, roll in three. Reroll. She gets the re-roll for herself now, right? Yep. Yes, she does. Yeah, that's a 2.0 addition. All right. So mm -hmm. here's the question. Mm -hmm. No, I will take the shield. Oh, spend the focus. Brandon would tell you to spend the focus. Brandon would tell me to spend the focus. But <laughs> Daniel would tell you to spend the focus. I probably would spend the focus just because the next two shots are unmodded, so they're un unlikely to do damage. Plus, you still, you still have the reroll. So we'll yep. see if it pays off or not. Anyways, yeah. uh, yellow. Range three. Close four. Four. Crit. All right, so that was from orange? Orange, yep. yep. All right, so roll in four. Ah! Bang <laughs> ah. the four. Bang the four. Here, here, Tommy's, Tommy's like, see, uh, yeah. see you, dicks. Tommy I was right. right. <laughs> you could also reroll one three just for the sake of it. Um, TL range one. Blank. See, blank. <laughs> range one <laughs> to Sarah Sue. Uh, two hits. Only. Reroll. Yeah, I was gonna say dick reroll. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mining gale sentry. Can you kill number two? I don't know. Let's find out. Well, no, because Daniel's gonna natty and evade. Number three. I think I think we oh. all know Daniel's gonna roll a natty evade. Yes, he is. He's, so two versus one into teal. Nice. Oh, look, Natty's. Right back you did your you. part. <laughs> <laughs> we all knew this was going to happen. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's like, what? <laughs> no big deal. No big thing. Three of eight chance. Except with my dice that are all evades. All right, so that takes us to round five. Round five dials. 
Um, so yeah, I think, let's see, score wise, it's, I think the, I think it's just 62 for Daniel to 21. 20 something? Yeah. Yeah, 21 whoa, whoa. F- for half an arc. Hold on, I gotta undo that because I grabbed a ship instead of a tile. <laughs> I almost did that today. All right, so yeah, so if you're just joining us, uh, what we're doing is uh, kind of what I call beer and pretzels. So I'm um, asking the players uh, once dials are down what they think their opponent is going to do. Talk a little bit about the, the you know the decisions they had to make, um, and then stuff is getting blown up. So yeah, so t- Tommy to you know the reason i was gonna was thinking for me i would have dialed in the 4k for tarani is i would have one-hearted captain sevor right into obi-wan's face and <laughs> and and not had a shot but you know also then obi-wan you know is is not doing obi-wan things either yeah Also, you know, part of that is also because I, you know, Sevor would have had an action at that point, and I would have taken an evade just to, you know, keep him safe from butt shots. Well, not safe, but you know, less p- palatable uh, a target. Yeah. Move. Your dial like that, M3. I don't think I, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Oh, well, all right, we have dials down. We have dials down. All right, Daniel, let's talk about your decisions here first, or what you were worried about Tommy doing. So, I'm worried that his I one is going to try and do some blocking, you know, two bank or hard one, just to get there to muck things up. So that's on. So I hopefully will. Avoid that, but we'll see how, what happens. Um, it's getting really tight. There's not really much place to move. So I feel like I think a lot of my arcs are just going to kind of try and bump into each other, self-block, so that I can keep my guns pointed, at least in the general good direction. Um, a shot is better than no shot, even if it's unmodded. And yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, C4, I think, is going to either do a two bank to the right Again, just to try and keep guns on teal, or potentially do a hard one to try and uh, block uh, Obi Wan, and maybe Obi Wan will fly past Sevor and he'll get a shot with Sevor onto Obi Wan still. 
Uh, Layton's probably just doing like a hard one or a hard two turn just again to get in the fight. Uh, Sirisu is kind of in the weird spot. Um, Sirisu kind of can do almost anything from like a K turn because uh, I think they have a four K right. Uh, three and no, five. Three, three and five. Three K is kind of tough. I'm not yeah. sure if I would do a three K with Sirisu, but you you have to think like Teal's gonna move, but you don't, you don't we don't know if uh, orange or red's gonna do anything weird. So Sirisu might just bug out. Honestly, like maybe if even well five K may get bumped by Obi Wan. So and hard to say with Sirisu. Maybe like a three bank or or just a fast move just to get out of there. All right. And uh, Tommy, what were you thinking about here? Uh, trying to block, you know, teal and red with uh, uh, mining guild sentry, and then just you know, Obi Wan is probably gonna, you know, I would expect him to just follow back through or bug out. I'm not really sure, so we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm expecting a mess, and we'll see if I can. Uh, I've figured a way to fly around it. Though, I think I'm. I think uh, that orange. I, I forgot to factor in where that orange arc is, and he's gonna probably gonna get a nice shot on one or two of my ships. All right. Let's see. All right. And. Hmm. He's fine where it is. Take focus. Arcs. So let let me do this. Just to make it easier. I'll, I'll reveal my DAO without moving them. So we can, if you want to talk about it, we can do that. Okay. So I have a two four dialed in with teal. Because I was, I was expect, I was hoping you did a two bank to get in there, and a two four would hop over nicely. But because you did the hard one, I think a two four will bump. Um, and then my plan was teal hops over, red does a hard two to the left, yep. and kind of much shot on to either Sarasu or your uh, mining guild, and then uh, orange again just kind of gets self blocked and goes in that way. Um, but since you're going to block Teal, I still think I move Teal first, take the block. Red will then move, get blocked by Teal, and Red will have a nice range one shot onto your Mining Guild tie. And then that should, I think, theoretically give Orange a clear path to finish this two turn. But that's going to be tight, but we'll see. If, if it, even if it doesn't, I still got guns pointing in the right direction. So yeah. I'll go Teal, and then Red, and then Orange. So that clears one stress. That bumps there, but again, I got a nice range one shot onto uh, your money guild, so I'm okay with that. And that. So he'll take a focus. Yep. Okay. And so Seaver did do the hard, and in this case he bumps. Fine, he wasn't getting an action anyway. And I think Leighton's going to end up bumping too. We'll see. Oh! Oh, wow. Hey, look at that. Wow. Yeah, I was so, actually surprised you didn't just do a one hard there. Yeah, I think a one I, hard would have been actually in two hard. Yeah, it might have hit that corner now. <laughs> might have hit the corner of the gas cloud, or, yeah, and it, it. Even with the. Yeah, I was expecting the arc to move maybe a little bit further, even with the bump, but. All right, uh, decision time. He has a lock on 
take number three, which number three is sitting on. So, uh, Duke would be nice, but he's just going to take a focus. And then, uh, Cerisu attempted a 5k. Oh, man. That's a, that's a complete mess, so... Yeah. What is interesting there is it looks like that would have cleared if the arc wasn't there. Not there. <laughs> no, it uh, it still bumped Obi Wan. Did it? Oh, it did it? Look. Okay. Obi Wan flashed. Hmm. It's okay. Oh. I, I'm, I'm relying on my oh, dice no. to. Uh... Oh no! Can't believe that fit. So there's that. Um, so, obviously, I don't want to get shot, so I'm going to bear roll to the right to not get shot by Seaboard. That's when the force for that for fine tune. And I'll focus. Okay, Sarah Sue. All right, so range range one to both arcs. One in... Both arcs. Yep. Yep. So we will. Shoot into the one in front to get the extra die and hope for natties. So we'll shoot into orange four. Okay. And that we'll crit is unblockable. Good. And we set a second one to crit mm -hmm. because of. Uh, but it doesn't matter because he's got a shield still. Yep. Plus, he's going to roll a natty. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Jesus, Daniel. Stop hacking the system. I, I don't know, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, just have to... you don't sound sorry. Never sorry. I'm, I'm shedding tears internally for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Obi Wan range. Yep. Range one into Layton. Eyeballs. Oof. Ouch. All right. Yep. Layton rolls three. Uh, Going to check for range from... There, what is it? Yeah, I can just do this. Control click. Don't mess with the menu. Three yep. is in range one. Yep. So I'll re-roll this. Yep. And spend the focus to take yep. one. One shield. Kind of a best case easy. outcome for you know being next to Sarah. So yeah, easy as Sam would say. And Obi Wan is spending a lot of time in this game four starved, which is interesting. All right, so we've got Layton yeah. and Sevor. I think Sevor is probably the net the easiest shot to call into Teal. That uh, looks like range one. No, Ooh, don't do it. <laughs> Bullseye for both of them. But we will... Oh, actually, that's a good question. No, you, your instinct is correct. Take ships off the board when you can. Yeah. Initiative so, kill yeah. ships when you can, buddy. Definitely. You do not want that butt arc firing at Seavor. No, I don't. But Layton has a lock. <laughs> yep, you can we're going to go two. I mean, you can, yeah, you could. I mean, you, you okay. did activate Seavor. I did so activate Seavor, yes. so. So I will shoot Seavor into two. Um, so here we go. Three. Uh, just the one. It's okay. You can crack it. No, Don't no, no crack. And you didn't even have to. 
So Daniel, when when so, a green die does come right. up blank for you, you know, what do you do? Do you like <laughs> punish your green dice? Like, how how do you get them to not suck? No, no. See, you have to be nice to them. You got to <laughs> treat them nicely, give them like a little nice little rub, massage, <laughs> and yeah, wine and dine. Because if, if you treat them well, they'll they'll treat you well in return. If, if you <laughs> you know. If you're mean to them, then they'll 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 disown you when you when you need them the most. All right. So Leighton has a shot on the teal, and I'm there's he has a lock underneath teal somewhere. Well, sure, that's fine. So but teal's auto blaster. Dead, isn't he? No. no, he did no. he did the into, uh, red, into oh, red. Oh, you shot into red, red with Seawar? Yeah. Oh, Thomas. It's have okay. It's him. he's dead. Doesn't matter. He's dead. See? Was that auto blaster? Because it didn't even matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. We'll but yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 It's very... So that's 42 points. And I think, Daniel, you still have 62, right? Uh. Yep. Probably. No half yeah, points so. yet. Yeah, because I think both okay, the uh, M threes are just sitting there, one away from half points. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, orange will activate first. Yep. Uh, range two into Layton. Two, it looks like. Two. Yep. Yeah, range two. Single crit. Ooh. Ooh. Re roll. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh man. Is it control T? Yeah. I'm just sensor array. That's not good. Uh, that's okay. You're just fo you focus anyways, it's fine. Uh, do you get your evade token now? For what it's worth? Yes, I get an evade token. Oh, actually, you should have gotten the Vade token after Obi Wan shot you the first time. Oh, that's right. Which you could have then spent. Rewind here. that. Is it the May or is it the Must? Yeah, yeah, we'll spend it and take out that. Yeah, so it's after you defend. Yeah, it just gains. Oh no, no, no! If the, the if the attack must miss. Miss, yeah, yeah. So there, oh, my. Oh no! So he doesn't it. get it. Oh. No. No, no. So well, the, now, now, no. Yeah, you never get it. Did he take it. one? He never, he take yeah, he took, yeah, you took a shield the first time. Took a shield. Yeah. Yes. And you killed the arc, so you didn't miss. And then I hit you now, so we never missed. Yep. So no, no evade for you. Quit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, red will take a range one into Sarasu. Jiros is going to die. Three hits. Jesus. Reroll. <laughs> Six one. All right, so both of your M3s have hit half points <laughs> on these attacks. All or, right. Um, so the mining, uh, mining guild sentry. Yeah. Range three on orange. Range one. Maybe. Range one. I meant three red dice. Yep. Ooh. And now it's a second arc at half points. So. One oh three for Daniel. And sixty three for Tommy. And I don't think we're still in round four. I think that we're heading into round six. Six. Tommy, fucking update your shield. Uh, this stress is gone. I think it was... Uh, it was a pain pilot, yeah. yeah.
Now, of course, Obi-Wan is untouched, which is the real hazard here. Uh, because unlike Sarasu, Obi-Wan is an endgame ship. What? Yes, correct. Tommy, were you so, yeah, expressing discontent with my unlike Sarasu? <laughs> Sirisu isn't an endgame ship? I am. I mean, he might shocked. sometimes stumble into the endgame, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me making cut. Whatever, store champ, Tommy Ten Thumbs win. Tommy just wins. Radically. See what I did there? Uh-huh. Tommy win-win? Uh-huh. No? You don't see what I did there? I see it. I'm, I, I'm just going to acknowledge it and move on. <laughs> so, so Look, Tommy, the, the house of the mine is uh, up for sale. <laughs> just a heads up. You knocked that shit off, Daniel. <laughs> it's got a swimming pool in the back. You can get all of that and more up it's here a, for 100k less, Tommy. Single, single story, but it's got, like, I think four bedrooms, I want to say. I got to double check the numbers, though. I think it's listed at, I think it was like five seventy five, pretty good deal. Except there's no water, and it's a hundred degrees ninety percent of the year. No, it's only like 80, 80 degrees right now. We have the windows open. It's nice, bre- nice uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, valley breeze coming through. This is exactly what I hate about the Central Valley. It's eight o'clock. I mean, eight eighty degrees at eleven o'clock at night. That's disgusting. It's probably seventy now. I'm exactly, you know, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I see Davis Daniel's is at 72, Daniel, so I'd imagine yeah, you're close to that. Daniel's got a little bit of heat stroke, so he can't really tell how hot it is. <laughs> and actually, Woodland's still at 75, so I, 80, I guess, is... You get used to it. Ugh, no, no way. All right, here comes my... I'm just moving now because this game <laughs> has been determined. So, Tommy, you've stopped thinking about what Daniel's going to do, and you're just dialing whatever? Yes. Okay. Daniel, obviously you are thinking about what Tommy's going to do, so what? how did you approach this turn? Um, I just put my arcs in places that hopefully didn't get blocked, but I'm going to get blocked, and just keep my guns open and keep Obi-Wan in the fight, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. You're okay with the arcs kind of getting jammed up in here, right, as long as they get shots and Obi-Wan is free to... To mm-hmm. his his sort of reposition thing, right? Right. So the nice thing about my list, oh, I mean, I have sense as well. If it, if it comes to, like against I sixes, which is why I brought sense, but it doesn't really matter in this list because my arcs would usually move before most things, and Obi Wan also doesn't really care where you go because after I move, I can just not. I mean, I I can almost pick up my ship and just put it where I want. <laughs> yes. Right. That makes any sense. Yeah. Good old Delta Sevens. Yeah, it's. Okay, you know, anyway. I think I think uh, well, I'm going to digress here a little bit about um, you know list crafting. I like Obi Wan better with CLT um, because he's just so damn cheap uh, with CLT and it lets you fit so much, so many other things. Um, but obviously, Delta Seven is one of the best upgrades in the game. You know, turning basically A wings into almost um, <laughs> almost tight defenders. <laughs> For, yeah. for for a measly twenty ish points. Mm-hmm. So uh, red didn't move just because you bump got bumped. Yep. Um and Leighton does the four K just to turn around. Alright, and see we're just it's jammed up in there, but I need to clear stress. Yep. And I have Sarisu not going anywhere. But he's going to give a hell of a lot of rerolls. Oh, sorry. I thought that one dialed back by accident. Sorry. So, I don't think I'm getting shot by too much. Uh, I'm not getting shot by Seavor. I'm not getting shot by Sirisu. I'm taking a shot from the. Mine Giltai and Leighton, which 
no, no big deal. So I think I'll just focus. Yeah, I just focus. Okay, uh, Sarasu, I don't think it's a shop coin check. Okay, Obi Wan. Should have a shot, yep. Ooh, yep. Range, uh, one. range one on Sarasu. Hope for blanks. Those nah, are not blanks. never. Those are not Sorry. blanks. Just roll Maddie's. It's fun. Oh, no. Not enough. Nope. Not it. And unfortunately, now Sarasu is not going to be around to give rerolls. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so you're Leighton or Sivor? So Sivor has no shots. Leighton has range two. And it's got to be Bullseye as well. Yeah. Yep. Bullseye on number two. So we will shoot number two. Oh, so wow. Three I'm, dice. I'm shocked the Bullseye's not on Obi Wan. Must have just threaded the needle. Yeah, he's got plenty of space. Yeah, he does. Okay. Wow. Damn bent arcs. Somebody get me Jeff. <laughs> right, the bullseye bent arc. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, he just gets uh, the crit. <laughs> yep. Yep. Is Leighton an arc? No, I'm not. Like, you're, I'm not I, I don't have you an arc. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like that. So it just yep. goes through. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, yeah, this engine. Womp womp. Okay. Uh, Seaboard, no shot. So my shot's back. Yep. Hmm. Well, Red only has one shot, so Red will take the range one into your mining guild. Single crit. Here's where Sirisu go. Uh, everyone goes, Sirisu, where'd you go? <laughs> oh, he's fine. No, he didn't need it. Uh, let's that what? Range two. Range two into Thivor? Thivor. Three to Leighton, three to Mining Guild. Yeah, we'll go range two into Seabor. Um, I have no token to jam. Yeah. Two hits. Look, look, no re-roll. But do it, re-roll it, re-roll it, re-roll it. <laughs> <laughs> you did that on purpose, Daniel. You knew I he did. was going to be heartbroken by the result. I did. I did. You know how to make those green though. dice come up as evades. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I All right. Program to do it for me. <laughs> look, I know, I know that, uh, you know, Muon coded something special in there for you. <laughs> If player equals Daniel Lim, then give Evade Bhutan. All right, so I have a range one shot into the arc, or I have a range two shot into Obi-Wan with one force. So we will do on three or two on two. With it. Normally, I would just shoot the arc, but we're going to try and punch damage through on uh, Obi-Wan. Okay, two on two. Does it really matter? We're supposed to my my force there, yep. so uh, no damage. Yeah, I would have done the three on one myself. You're desperately trying to crawl back here, and you've got to get points. Damn it, Tommy! What? You never listen to me. It's a casual right, game, so I'm not thinking about points. What'd you say, Daniel? End no, is it just end of round, so uh, force comes back and yeah. Yep. It was, I mean, it's three. It was actually three. You said three versus three, but it was three on three versus three one, versus one. Yeah. on the arc, yeah. right? Or two versus two. Mathematically, you take the three versus one. 
plus a chance to get half points. You and your casual nature. It's almost like you're part of a group called Militant Casuals. We're gonna go with that. All right, dials are down. Uh, let's just roll this. All right, we're gonna guild sentry. See if he fits. Fix focus. Arcs. Mm, bump into you there. Yeah, I don't really at this point it, I just don't care about actions, I just care about getting time on target. Yeah, you're in the lead. You wanna roll dice. Alright, Leighton doesn't go anywhere. Let's right. see if it goes there. And uh, I don't think a barrel roll fits, so he'll just take a focus. Speaking of time on target, uh, um. This is actually a really interesting decision you have to make here, Daniel. Really? Right. Well, because, you know, you, you need to think about, do you want to, yeah. You want to kill Leighton so Leighton can't auto-blaster you back, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but you only have the one Leighton force. Against my two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, we roll plus a force is still better. And if I yep. kill you, I don't need to spend my force in defense because I'm not getting shot back, so I want to exactly. kill you first. Yep. Okay, three dice with a reroll and force. Uh, spend the force. Six. Six, one. Oh. oh, where are you? Sarasu, where are you? Do it, reroll it. In little itty bitty pieces. <laughs> roll, it. roll it. Okay. He's he's gonna press Bhutan. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, you are yes. the worst. Yes. <laughs> All, All right, right. Layton's so, the only one that has a shot. Layton, yeah. So we said that was range two. Yeah, it's range bull two. Yeah, exactly. You're in bullseye. I I would have gotten the evade too if. Uh, 
If it misses. <laughs> <laughs> if it misses. <laughs> yep. Here's three auto blasters. Oh, bump, bump. Okay. Uh, not half points yet, but hurting a little bit. Um, so orange is going to go into Leighton. Uh, range orange two. Has... Yep. Two hits. Headlight. Womp womp. Uh, red range one out the back onto Zivor. Safe and collect the dials. Yep. So Leighton is 40 points. Sarasu is 45. So that's 85 points there. Plus Kolda is 62. So that's 147. And Sivor and the Mining Guild tires hanging out just barely not uh, half pointed. So clearly, Seavor's just going to clean up now. Correct. Yeah, you got he this. Does. Yeah, you, you got it. Don't worry about it. Aha, I am a big fat cheater. How so? Damage, Damage engine. engine. <laughs> oh, he should be stressed. And there it is. No K turn for you. No K turn for me. Let me change my <laughs> dial. <laughs> no K turns. No turns. Buff dials down? No, I do not. Damn it, Tommy. Oh, hold okay. on. I have to change. I have to change the style. You don't have I'm to. I mean, you, you were going to 3k, right? No. Right. He actually stole an Imperial TIE Fighter dial so he could do a 4k. Yes. Oh, okay, got it. All right, I'm set. All right. Whee! Huh. Why, why, why no 3k? Fine. A two hard. I th actually expected you to do a one hard. I didn't think it would clear, so I changed my mind. Hmm. I. And now he's dead. Yeah. I think uh, not clearing was better. Yes. Potentially than. Did you roll for the? Uh... I did. Okay. Okay. So uh, C four. Oh, that's closer to the rock than I thought it was going to be. Not that that matters, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, in this case, I can still take a focus. Yeah. Okay, see if shot. See if war shoots into red at range. Who it looks like. Yep. <clears throat> and strips the focus. Don't forget that part. Yeah. Flips. I'm my focus. <laughs> now just crit crit fuel oh never mind oh man spend Hello. it spend her no balls <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've reached the point of the night where I'm just rooting for annihilation so <laughs> yes 
Okay, um, That's red, fair. move one into your mining guild. Nope. Yep. Uh, hit crit, and the average results there. Hey, hey, look at that. Nice roll, but god damn it. Alright, move one into C4. Four. Oh, man, that's my red Ooh. dice from earlier today. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> you forgot to deactivate the evades for Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> I did. You forgot it. to disable re the cheat code. Re -roll don't it. don't re roll it. Stop it. Re -roll it. <laughs> Imagine C4. Oh, oh, it's okay. Oh, see, that time ta Daniel was taunting you because he knew he wasn't going to change it. I turned the Chico's off. <laughs> and we're on to round nine. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, wait, the other doubt's not out yet. Now I'm good. <sighs> Hold on, no, I'm not. Oh. Oh, oh, mm, mm. I'm good. Just do the three okay. days, man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And now I do the 3K. I knew it. Oops. Okay. Uh, four K there. Okay, set. I should have stuck with the three. And now the 5k, or the two sloop. Sloop! Two sloop, Probably to the sloop. right. Sloop. Yep, sloop. The 5k would put me weird in the weird spot between those rocks, and I wanted this yeah. to my, my, uh, my, my escape or my fall and turn easier to move Yeah, through. that's true. Daniel wants to put, put me out of my misery. I want Daniel to put you out of your misery. <laughs> Alright, Omi. Range 2. Nothing but natties. Bend the force. Bend the force. Three hits. He did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> phantom Sarasu gives you a phantom evade. All right. Range one from red into your mining guild. Uh, hit, hit crit. Wow. Yep. Cheat codes are on by now. Damn it. I gotta talk to Muon about giving me those cheat codes. <laughs> I guess it's if you don't bug, bug him about arcs. Wow. You, oh, no. <laughs> you, you gave me enough time. I, I was able to enter the code to turn it off, by the way. <laughs> Vassal's like, we also want you to wreck Tommy. <laughs> Vassal's like, we're, we're done with this. We're, you're, go home. Go, go sleep. Yeah. This All right. Sense. Uh really done with this nonsense Oof, yeah um so that was kind of fun uh kind of different uh i hope this was entertaining we all kind of 
went over a, a cliff about a half hour ago, I think. <laughs> but oh, that's, yeah. But that's okay. Um, any any last thoughts you guys want to share about the game? It wasn't as um, bad as I thought it'd be. Considering the, the horrible... Yeah, I don't... I, I, don't I, I think your list... Uh, you know, I think if you, with a few... Not necessarily, like, tweaks to upgrades, but I think with a couple of different takes on your approach and this list is actually not bad i think i don't think leighton is worth the 30 points but sunny uh, bounder time yeah, why not um <laughs> daniel daniel you didn't use sense I, I actually, like once you didn't really well, need to i didn't need to uh sense is more for against uh other i5s or like they outbid me and they move first or because I, I never really wanted to reposition with my arcs because I kind of liked the way they were. At least mm-hmm. once we got into the scrum of things, so right. there's really no point sensing um, in the middle of that. If that makes any sense? Because yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, because you're just gonna block um, everything anyway by virtue of being in the furball. Yeah, exactly. Um, if there was like a Vader or a Whisper or some kind of crazy shift like that, I would have sensed as much as I could, just because those are very unpredictable. Whereas these, like the TIE Fighters and um, Tarani and the uh, M3As. All, all, yeah, all three types of, uh, all three of my ships are very, are very, they're very straightforward. I, I wouldn't say they're predictable, but they, they are very straightforward. They're yeah, their dials are not yeah. shocking, yeah. right? They're not, you're not going to pull a right. surprise maneuver out of your hat with those dials. And they don't have mm-hmm. reposi- repositioning, and, really. That I mean, yeah, okay, barrel roll, hooray, right? But no boosts, so... No boosts and no linked actions, so you're 